This Pet X Talk is brought to you by Natura Pets, Found Animals, and Dogwise Publishing. Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Liz Bales. During my 16 years in practice, I have become fascinated with cats, specifically cat behavior. Cats are mysterious creatures that are often difficult for humans to understand because we see the world so differently. Today, I want to talk to you about the natural feeding behavior of cats. And when we understand how a cat prefers to eat, it's clear we need to rethink the bowl. Specifically, how we feed our cats is just as important as what we feed our cats. Now there's good scientific understanding about how cats feed naturally. It's very important to understand that cats are solitary hunters. That means they want to hunt and eat alone. Cats are social animals that can live in groups in harmony, but it's normal for them to hunt and eat alone. Kittens are taught by their mothers how to hunt, and while the instinct to hunt is innate, the technique is taught. So just how important is hunting to cats? Well, cats spend between six and eight hours a day hunting for their prey. Now this is how they naturally get exercise. They do this in bursts of activity throughout the day and night. Scientists estimate that cats hunt between 10 and 20 times a day. The typical prey for a cat, as you know, is a mouse. A mouse has approximately 30 to 35 calories. Not all hunts are successful and a cat has to catch between eight and 13 mice a day to be able to sustain life. Cats' bodies and their metabolism thrive on these small meals. In addition, cats prefer to have their water and their food in a separate location. And cats don't repeatedly eat in the same location. This would make them vulnerable to their predators like foxes, raccoons, hawks and owls. And in addition, their prey's pretty smart. They wouldn't go to the same place every day because they're likely to be caught. Now, cats are predators. It's important for their mental and physical health to exercise their predatory instincts at mealtime. I want to introduce you to the concept of the seeking circuit. Cats need to perform the hunting behaviors in the proper sequence to be fulfilled. Cats want to hunt, catch their prey, play with their prey, eat, then groom and sleep. Now, how well do we do meeting the cat's needs when we bring them into the indoor environment and feed them from a bowl? When we feed cats from a bowl, we deny them this seeking circuit. All they get to do is eat. And let's talk about that eating. 58.2% of cats in America are obese. And sadly, studies show that only 10% of people with an obese cat recognize their cat as overweight. With the abundance of tasty food and the lack of the reason to go hunting, our cats are becoming dangerously overweight. In cats, this obesity increases the risk of diabetes. In fact, an obese cat has a four times greater risk of becoming diabetic than a normal weight cat. Additionally, we talked about the normal meal for a cat. The edible contents of that mouse are between one and two tablespoons of food. Mother Nature did a really good job designing the bodies and the metabolisms of cats to expect these small meals throughout the day and night. And they created the size of the stomach to be about the size of a ping pong ball, just the perfect size to accept this small amount of food. So when many indoor cats face a delicious overflowing bowl of food, they don't have the ability to exercise restraint and they overeat. In fact, they eat until their stomachs actually reject the undigested food and they regurgitate it right back up. This syndrome is lovingly referred to as scarf and barf. The normal portion for a cat being fed kibble is about 10 to 15 pieces of kibble. If a cat were respecting a normal portion size, it would go over to the bowl, take two to three mouthfuls of food and walk away. But how do humans interpret that behavior? To us, walking away from a bowl after two mouthfuls is a sign that our cat is finicky and does not like that food. So we head right out to the store and find a food that our cat finds much tastier and will eat a big amount in one sitting. What just happened here? We are contributing to our own cat's obesity. Our cat's bodies are dangerously overfed and their souls are being starved. 
I mentioned that mealtime for a cat is not just about obtaining calories. Mealtime is the essential time for a cat to interact with its meal and express its predatory instincts. Now what happens when it can't do that? Some ca cats will tolerate the denial of their instincts reasonably well, but many don't. Some cats just give up and they withdraw and sleep all the time. Your cat may actually become lazy because it doesn't have the physical and mental stimulation of hunting for its food. Worse yet, cats can, re can redirect this inwardly into negative behaviors like becoming aggressive or destructive. And for some cats, this stress is directed inwards and can result in a painful condition called feline interstitial cystitis. Environmental stress may actually be the cause of your cat's urinary problems. Less dangerous for your cats, but pretty darn inconvenient for you, is night waking. Cats hunt both during the day and the night in search of their meals. It's perfectly normal for your cat to want to hunt and eat in the wee hours of the night. But since there's no prey to hunt, they're hunting you. So when we understand the natural feeding behaviors of cats, it's clear that the bowl is not meeting their needs. We cat lovers have talked so much about what we feed our cats, dry food, wet food, raw, but we're missing the critical piece of this conversation. How you feed your cat is just as important as what you feed your cat. It's time to focus on how we meet the needs of our cat's predatory nature in the indoor environment. I hope you've learned something today about the natural feeding behaviors of cats and how we can fulfill them for our cats in the indoor environment. We're here with Dr. Liz Bales after her wonderful PetX talk. Dr. Liz, I want to ask you about the seeking circuit and what can we do to encourage that for cats? This is a great question. The seeking circuit is a beautifully well-designed system that happens within the cat. And the behaviors need to happen in that order. Hunt, catch, play, eat, groom, sleep. And they go through the circuit, just like around a circle. So when we feed cats from a bowl, the only thing that we're giving them is eat. They're not getting any of those other behaviors. And when we play with them, with active play or if they're playing with, without us, all they're getting is play. You may have heard of something called a puzzle toy. Puzzle toys are fantastic and I encourage them, but all you're getting is play and eat. We talked about that natural cat behavior requires that the cat go hunt for their food. They actually seek out their food. And in nature, they're doing that between six and eight hours a day. It's the bulk of their waking hours that are spent in the seek portion. So we need to find a way to have them hunt, catch, play, eat, groom, sleep in that order in the actual seeking circuit. Now, do cats naturally, as you say, take to this type of approach? Well, they do, they absolutely do. But the technique for how to hunt, I mentioned, is taught from mother to kitten. In addition, if, you are, if you're a cat and I release a bunch of mice or lizards into your living room, that has obviously a lot more stimulation for the exact hunting instinct. When we're trying to train a cat to use a feeding device, there, there's a, there is a learning curve. Now, for most cats, I would say if you have 10 cats, Eight out of 10 are gonna get it pretty quickly. Two out of 10 have a much more skeptical um, approach. They see this new thing that has food in it and they're very leery of it and they don't, wanna, they don't wanna deal with it. We need a little bit of hunger for them to wanna engage with it. So number one, you need to be patient and give them time to accept this new thing in their environment. And by patient, I mean it could be weeks. Of course, you're not starving them for weeks, but leaving that in addition to their regular feeding station, leaving this training device in their regular environment with a high value food treat inside till they get used to it. Once you know they're used to it a week, maybe even two, you can pick up their food dish. And again, cats are solitary hunters. So I recommend doing this when you're not gonna be in the house or overnight when you're asleep, pick up the food dish. So the only food source for that defined period of time is the feeding device and give them time to acclimate to it, A, with the drive of hunger and B, without you there. 
Again, most cats are gonna get it pretty quickly and without much work, but there is about the 20% that needs some time, patience, and encouragement. And I want you to know that if it's difficult for your cat to, I call transition onto a noble way of life, that transition period has no bearing on the fact that this is a good choice for your cat. All cats should be hunting. It fits the natural behaviors of cats to be hunting. The transition can be difficult for that small portion. I kind of make the analogy that it might be difficult to learn how to ride a bike for you to get that technique and the balance and for the training wheels to come off. Just because it's difficult to master that technique doesn't mean that you are not gonna be a fantastic cyclist. It's just a learning period. Now you've mentioned the seeking circuit and what to expect, but how do we achieve that? You know what, this is a great question and it's one I asked myself. So I would go to veterinary conferences year after year and I would hear about these natural feeding behaviors of cats. And in the past few years, what I talked about in my talk, that we can directly connect the lack of environmental enrichment and the lack of the ability for a cat to hunt with some of the major reasons why cats get put to sleep. And we know that the number one cause of death for cats is euthanasia. I mean, that doesn't break your heart. And the number one cause of euthanasia is behavior problems. Now I'm taught in my, in my continuing education lectures as a veterinarian that, that we know the reasons and we can fix this with, with environmental enrichment and being able to fulfill the seeking circuit. And we had nothing to do it with. And I, I left that conference and I said to my other feline veterinary friends who were attending it with me, what do you guys do? When I get back to my hospital, it's my job to care for my patients. I don't have a tool, what do you do? And they looked at me and said, we don't have tools either, we don't do anything. And I, I said to myself, well, someone needs to do something. My God, someone needs to do, oh. I think I need to do something. And I really did think it's my responsibility. If that's not out there, and I really want to be an advocate for cats, I can do more to help cats in general than I can one at a time who come into my hospital for help if I spend the rest of my life creating something and bringing it to people to explain how important this is to them and to give them the tools to do it. It really is my life passion. Dr. Liz, thank you so much for all that you and the No Bowl feeding system are doing. It really makes a difference in the pet world and we truly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. Funding for PetX Talks is provided by Nature of Pets. Nature of Pets can help you optimize your pet's health with premium organic supplements from the Amazon and Andes Mountains. Visit naturapets.com. Dogwise Publishing, all things dog. For all of your expert dog book needs, visit dogwise.com. Bound Animals, working towards big ideas that advance the safety and happiness of animals in our homes, our shelters, and everywhere in between. Visit foundanimals.org. This has been a Pet World Media Group production.